Hey, everybody. Welcome to today's edition of the Daily Market Commentary. I am your host, Chuck Fulkerson. Hope everybody's had an absolutely amazing trading day yesterday as we got a little bit of a pullback. I'm doing another early morning edition. Uh, seems like a lot of people like the early morning edition to kind of as a way to kickstart their days. Uh, but uh, once again, I will be a, a bit quick this morning. I want to make sure that I get as much in as possible. So getting rolling, starting with the S&P. Now, we had talked about yesterday the S&P. We knew it was coming down. We felt like it was falling, and that's exactly what it did. And it actually fell right into um, our area. Now, it did go a smidge below our our uh, selected uh, zone. So, you know, depending on how much wiggle room you gave, there was a chance that you got stopped out in this particular position uh, based on your uh, on the width that you put your stop underneath the underneath the area. So, if you got stopped out on that, it's just you know one of those days where that's that's the that's the trade that was given to us, right? I mean, we did get if you look at it on a much smaller time basis. Uh, you know, this was this was uh, one of those areas where we got a touch into here. Um, blew right through. So if you if you follow the rules precisely, then you actually probably didn't even get in the trade simply because on a dashed line, we get in after it comes out of the area. So if you follow the rules precisely, then you may have canceled your trade when it got below here. Um, and so you would not have participated in this next move up, uh, or you may still get, have gotten in as it came out, and then you'd probably still be in the trade. So I don't know how you chose to manage it. The key is, is that no matter how you chose to manage it, that you have a plan for managing it going forward. Now, that was what we were looking at on the hourly uh, time period. I'm going to remove this area now, as this area is no longer valid for us to use going forward. Um, I am going to highlight this little area right in here. Um, you know, uh, this is not. This didn't occur at a typical reversal time of the day that I like. I like reversals that are, you know, around market open. The reversals that occur around market open are going to be my typically my better opportunities. Um, but I do like the fact that it was an area of prior resistance. Um, excuse me. Yeah, it was it was a prior resistance area. We came base, 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 and then we we broke right through that. So I'm going to put this in here um, as a potential. Uh, I'm I'm very cautious always shorting anywhere near these all time highs. So I'm gonna uh, add a, actually turn that into more of a dashed line style trade. Um, you know, just to just to be a little bit on the safe side. I'm very cautious of these areas. Um, if you are as cautious as I am, you may even go down to say the 15 minute time period. Um, and if you if you want to be uh, very conservative, uh, you could even take just this upper part here. Matter of fact, that's what I'll do um, is just change that out. And the reason I do that is just simply because, you know, I don't want to short the all-time high if the market's telling me you've got very little shot here, right? And so, um, you know, looking at this, do I have a tremendous amount of conviction in this area? Absolutely not. But um, I think that there is a potential for reversal here. And you've got to be willing to take some swings um, in order to in order to hit the hit the home runs occasionally. So uh, in the Nasdaq, we actually didn't come down to our oops wrong button there. Um, we actually didn't come down to our reversal point that I had indicated yesterday. As you know, yesterday the markets were fairly weak, um, but we didn't get any lower than than really any quality buying opportunity areas. And so yesterday was was just a decent little pullback. Now the the interesting thing is though for the for one of the first times in a while we we've had a couple of pullbacks, and you typically get this parabolic move off of these pullbacks. At least that's what we've gotten in the past few weeks. I didn't get that parabolic move off of the pullback. I got kind of a me move off of the pullback. Now, if you don't know what me means in trading, it means this. Um, it's, it's just kind of sideways price action out of that area. So I'm not in love with the, the rally, if you will. And so this area here can be the same as what we looked at in the S&P. Now, the NASDAQ was our strongest performing index yesterday, as I sent a tweet out about that some, sometime in the middle of the day. So that NASDAQ being the strongest performing sector, uh, strongest performing um, index means that it could have been a good buying opportunity uh, for some of these some of these tech names. And, and there's a lot of tech names, especially in the, uh, uh, in the emerging market tech sector, uh, to take a look at. 
Uh, next, crude oil. So crude oil, we had a uh, little bit of, you know, this, this. we're still in this banded area here in crude oil, so I'm really not going to touch anything, as I think both of these are still very valid areas. Um, we may actually get another opportunity to short somewhere up in here. Um, and uh, I think yesterday on the, uh, on the recording, we had talked about uh, if you were watching this early in the day, getting short on a candle-to-candle style, and we actually did that recording uh, right here. And so I got a couple of tweets from people that said that they had taken the short on the candle to candle style of trade. And if you did, then you did pretty well and you and you wouldn't have been stopped out until down here. Um, so you got a nice little run off of that on the candle to candle style trade if you were able to catch that yesterday morning. So I uh, hope I got a, got a couple of a couple of tweets and, and, and messages from you guys that were able to do it. So awesome. Saw some. Uh, that's great to hear. Gold. Gold, I've got a little bit of a reversal uh, pattern still down here. I, I think gold is weakening a bit in momentum, so just keep an eye on what gold is doing as we're seeing that weakening momentum in gold. Uh, even on the bigger picture, the daily chart, we're seeing a slightly bit of weakening momentum on the move up. Doesn't mean the move up is over by any stretch of the imagination. Um, and on a daily chart, I still don't have a good reversal pattern, right? For my reversal pattern, I need to see that happen in a better uh, in a better environment, in a better area, and I don't really have a candle-to-candle style even for an entry yet on gold. Um, looking back, let's go take a look at our bonds. Uh, so our bond areas, we are creating a bit of a base here uh, in bonds uh, as we've got the the 10-year note here, creating a bit of a base. We got a little bit of a reversal off of this uh, off of this uh, peak right here. Still have this area in here that price hasn't gotten up to yet. Um, if you are so inclined, you may be looking at a breakout short in bonds right below this area here. So just kind of keep that area uh, on your radar screen. Uh, in the Aussie, the Aussie is continuing to, uh, to march uh, higher as we are. We still have this area back in here on the Aussie. Um, if I wanted to go, you know, looking at this on more of a daily time period, a, a bigger picture, you can see that we're coming up to a multi you know, a multi-month, multi-year high in the Aussie as we really haven't been able to get above this area in quite a while. And it's chopping along above that area. So if I go back even deeper and I go to, say, a weekly, um, you know, there's room for the Aussie to continue to run all the way up to 85, 86. So with keep that in mind if you're looking at, at currencies for longer-term investment opportunities that I think that there's room for the Aussie to run, and that's pretty primarily stemmed off the dollar continuing to fall. Um, the euro, we have the euro continuing its, uh, its rally higher, and if, I, and if I move this also to the weekly chart, um, we can see that the euro has another, another one with room to run up until 134. Uh, I think it has room to run until 134. So, you know, the, the euro, unfortunately, I thought it was going to pull back to 115, didn't quite get as low as I thought that it, that it would, uh, would get down to on the weekly, but it's just, it's moved nicely up off of that level. And, and your, you know, your European vacation is getting a bit more expensive um, as, it, as, as, as uh, the dollar loses weakness, this goes up. But that's also what's helping to drive our commodity prices, which also drives our equity market. So it's, it's cyclical in, in kind of the way these things move. The Canadian dollar, we have an area down in here that has not yet been touched. And if I look at this on a bigger picture period, and I'm just going to keep doing that on all these, you'll see that we're, you know, we're getting to this area in almost all these currencies where there was this precipitous drop in these currencies. Well, that precipitous drop in the currencies is really the rally in the dollar. Um, and that rally in the dollar that was straight up is, is why we see all of these opportunities in these other markets to get long as we're seeing weakness kind of continue uh, in that dollar. And so that's more on a, on a bigger macro scale. Um, but just something to see that we're, we're getting to that point where there was, I don't want to call it a free fall, but there was essentially, uh, you know, clean air, if you will, in price movement in some of these currencies that gives us a chance to get long and, and to ride maybe some of this rally higher. So but on the small time period, nothing really came into our areas in the Japanese yen or the Great British Pound uh, yesterday, uh, but we still will keep those on our radar for what they are. So I'm going to uh, pop off of here. I told you I'd be fairly quick today, um, but hopefully you're able to catch in on some of the moves from yesterday. The main thing is, especially on a day like yesterday, and even if we get a little bit of a move down, um, don't 
deviate from your plan. You know where your levels are. You have a pretty good idea of where of where you feel that the market's gonna gonna reverse. And if it doesn't, that's okay. Take your stop losses. Um, take your medicine. I, I remember I play golf with a friend of mine, and and if I hit the ball in the woods, sometimes I. Uh, Sometimes I, I want to try to be a hero, and I want to try to hit it out, and I want to try to go 200 yards out of the woods. And he says, take your medicine and just hit, just, and just, just hit, it, hit it back in play. And think of that with your trades. Sometimes you just got to take your medicine and take your stop losses if it goes against you and if you're not in the right position. And that's sometimes the best trades that you'll make all week. Uh, because it's not the big winners that you'll always remember. It's the losers that hurt you. So I uh, hope everybody has a great, great trading day. And if there's anything I can do for you, please feel free to send me an email, chuck at iiefinancial.com. Until tomorrow, talk to you soon. See you.